I can tell already, I'm super hungry. So you wanna wait? No. <laughs> I mean, you laid out all this food in front of me. <laughs> I'm ready to dive in. Take you so long, I want food, 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 food. It's so romantic. You wanna ruin all of this lovely oh. romance? Mukbang! <laughs> Hello! Welcome back to What's Safe Word. I'm Amp. I'm Mr. Christopher. And today... We get to eat! It's gonna be my favorite episode ever. I can't wait. I was going more for like the <laughs> sexy. You just wanted to scream about food. So. Food! <laughs> today we are doing a mukbang. Today we are doing a mukbang of aphrodisiac. So we are having our own menu. And we are going to be eating everything that people say are aphrodisiacs. Now around the world, every country has kind of its own staple items that they think enhances your sexual virility or your horniness or just your, your sense of wanting to get it on. So as far as aphrodisiacs go, I went for the easy to gain options, but there are actual countries that have things like tiger blood on their menu of aphrodisiacs, as well as whale penis. So you're lucky I couldn't get either of those today. <laughs> Did Safeway not have whale penis? <laughs> Now the human race for years has always been looking for that one thing that titillates us both sexually but stimulates us and it stares. What am I supposed to say? Oh. <laughs> and aphrodisiacs are food that get you in the mood and give you kind of those sexy feelings and wanting to do it. It comes from the Greek oh. goddess of love, Aphrodite, because uh -huh. Aphrodite was a whore. No, 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 no. She's a food Af whore. <laughs> She's a food whore. Now aphrodisiacs have been around for forever and there's lots of people that will argue about if they actually enhance and stimulate you or if they're just that, 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 or if they're just perceived placebos. So today we're gonna test and try out every aphrodisiac we get our hands on and see how horny we get throughout this. I'm, I'm already horny just looking at it, so. But also you guys just wanted daddy to get a mukbang in, so we're gonna have some mukbanging, we're gonna bang some mucks. No, that's a Pokemon. A muck, a muck, a muck. When you catch a Pokemon, can you fuck it? And today we're gonna have a five course meal uh, with snacks involved. So what you see here is not even the meal, Daddy. Oh my God, I'm so excited. Can I eat it all? You can. Pop, pop that cherry, Daddy. <laughs> oh, explode! Messy. <laughs> and so today we're not only gonna be talking about aphrodisiacs and testing out of eating the entire menu of aphrodisiac, but we're also gonna be answering your relationship and sex advice questions. Ooh, so much. <laughs> So your first meal today, Daddy, yeah. and you can continue snacking on everything as we go through, but your first meal is gonna be, hey, 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 hey. Civilized, civilized mukbang. Are we? <laughs> okay, go ahead. Ah. <laughs> God. We've got some walnuts on top, mm. some berries, and then antioxidants like pomegranates are actually really good for it's blood hurting. flow it's and getting you excited. So we're gonna dig right in here. Ah! As we get into the first. Oh my god, this is mm, so good. Yeah. Mm -hmm. mm. Mm. Oh, also today's episode is sponsored by Adam Mail, so thank you Adam Mail. We're gonna stuff our faces now, but we're gonna stuff our holes later with today's sponsor. Mm -hmm. Oh my god. That's the sound my butthole's gonna make later. Mm. <laughs> also, absolutely cleaned out before this. <laughs> Made lots of room. We're gonna be good. This is gonna be good. Mm -hmm. Let's answer the first question, which comes from Miss Jennifer, who asks, what would you suggest to someone that's attending their first munch? Munch away. Wait, is a, a munch before or after brunch? We used to have them in Seattle all the times at a place called CeCe's, and that's where the local community would cook up just a bunch of really easy to make stuff like biscuits and gravy and bacon. A lot of fatty foods, which don't actually- Those don't sound like aphrodisiacs. <laughs> no, they don't really lend themselves well to kink play either afterwards. Like there was one where we had chili and I was like, um. Mm -mm, mm -mm, mm -mm. Aphrodonte. Is that the, the goddess of- uh, Don't. Of don't. <laughs> Back to the question. What would you suggest to someone going to their first kink munch? To eat? No, no, <laughs> like for going to your first munch if you've never been to one before. I've never been to one. Well, I'm gonna suggest. <laughs> so tell me, please tell me. I would suggest taking someone with you that is into the scene or at least into and knows what you're going for. It's always easier to go to an event like that, whether it's a bar event or a munch with somebody that you can kind of confide in if it gets awkward or you need like an escape from a weird conversation. So bring a munch buddy. That's, that's what we're gonna call it. A butt munch buddy maybe. Oh wow, <laughs> you went there. <laughs> but the, just the word munch, just sounds 
like you're eating. Munches are meant to be social, but also provide a chance just to get a good bite. Usually happen around the weekend of like a contest. What would you say, the parfait, how does that hold up, Daddy, for aphrodisiacs so far? This is really good. And it's really fresh and like all natural ingredients. You actually feel yourself like being like energized in like a sexy way. Because I starved myself before this, I'm definitely getting energized. <laughs> so did you actually know, as far as champagne goes, biochemists say that it does actually heighten and lift your spirits? Your spirits. <laughs> Similarly though, uh, walnuts, are also an aphrodisiac. Ooh, and when they're candied, they're even more so. Get those nuts away from my face. Because they're a source of beneficial fatty acids like omega-3s, which actually help with hormone production as well as small arousals in some people. Fun fact, this was full before the start of this episode, but the puppy wouldn't let me finish it. Nuts. <laughs> now, how sexy is it to listen to your partner chew them? Not very. Mm. Thank God for editing where I can add music in the background that'll probably get all the sounds of chewing, at least. Oh, yum. Oh, okay. Oh, yum. Need a minute over there? Food does get me horny. Oh, I know. You have a feederism fetish, but I'm mm. sure. Mm. I mean, there's an episode on that where people get really into feeding other people or being fed, like sexually, that's absolutely a thing. It's called feeding or feederism. Do you remember that uh, scene in Nine and a Half Weeks when uh, Kim Basinger was blindfolded and Mickey Rourke fed her all of those like mm -hmm. honey and I thought that was so erotic when I saw it. But also I was like, oh, who has to pick that up afterwards? <laughs> and actually, as far as aphrodisiacs, strawberries, which mm -hmm. are shaped like a heart, was thought to be also related to Aphrodite as well. Wait, Aphrodite. how's that shaped like a heart? Like if you cut that in half, it looks like a heart. No, oh, well, not right now. It looks like a butt plug. Speaking of which, today's episode is sponsored by Adam Mail. So thank you again, Adam Mail and Aphrodite. Actually, it kind of looks like a nipple. Oh, 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 oh. Doesn't look like a heart. Well, you've. It's because you ate it. Is it giving you a heart on? Mm -hmm. How horny would you say you're feeling? I'm actually pretty horny. Let's do it. Oh my. But you know what comes after lunch, Daddy? Lunch. Yes. Are you ready for lunch time? I am so ready for lunch. What do we got? Okay, Daddy. Next up, we have a superfood salad for your next mm. aphrodisiac. I'm going to add some avocado to my salad. In our salad is some nice leafy greens, some antioxidants in the pomegranates, some avocado, and then red hot chili peppers, because red hot peppers are meant to, I guess, get your blood going. I think, actually, avocados are the sexiest vegetables. Why is that? Mmm. I don't know. Just the taste, the creaminess of them. It's an avocado! Thanks. Mm. Actually, the Aztec word for avocado is ahacadal? Oh, she educated. Thanks. Which means testicle. Are you kidding me? I'm not. The Aztecs actually had a word for avocado that meant testicle. Maybe it's because when you cut it open, there's a testicle inside. You know what? Possibly. High levels of <laughs> They're a little slippery, too. <laughs> Please stop playing with your testicles. Anyway, I figured we could have a nice red hot chili pepper. Ooh. So does the fire turn, turn up the heat? Well, it's not that spicy foods sometimes get you excited as well. Mm. And I think within aphrodisiacs, a lot of the time people will misconstrue inflammation and um, spice for love, which is not, even though you're heating it up in the bedroom, doesn't mean you need to heat it up in the kitchen. Woo hee! Ha ha ha! Mm. Woo hee! Ooh. It stimulates the nerve endings on the tongue, which releases epinephrine and the chemical that increases your heart rate. It releases endorphins. Oh, I got some seeds. <gasps> now, I don't know if it's turning me on or just okay. boiling my blood. Oh, oh, oh. oh, champagne. Oh, the coffee didn't help. Oh, the champagne didn't help. Give me a fork and let's eat this salad. While we do that, let's answer another question. And the second question comes from Terrible Lotus who asks, what would be your food of choice to be covered in during a scene? Okay, so do you remember the scene in Sex and the City where Samantha covered her naked body in sushi? Yeah. <laughs> That seemed like a horrific idea to me. Can you just imagine your body heat warming up the sushi and just, who's gonna eat that? That's not sexy, right? So not sushi. Okay. <laughs> what would you prefer? What about whipped cream? That's actually kind of a, a fallacy of, hmm, a fallacy, fallacy? Oh. Like penis? No, I got it. Uh, that's actually a fallacy of 
good sexy stuff, even though we do have it here on the table today, whipped cream and sugary things in your private areas is gonna lead to like higher STIs and infections. So you actually wanna avoid sugar in the private genital area. Twinkies. Okay. You can be covered in Twinkies. I'm, I'm trying to think of something not sweet that would be good on your body. I mean, in that case, you would be the hostess then. My bitch is on ho. Do you remember the one time we tied up a boy in, in the bar and put donuts all over him mm. and then covered him with sugar syrup and all sorts of But you just cream? said that you can't do that in the private bar. Well, I'm just saying, I'm just telling people not to do it, <laughs> not to do it around their genitals. No, that was fun. And that then you got fun. to lick it off. You know what? I honestly wouldn't mind sushi personally. Really? Yeah, because then I could eat it. I know, but that's like lukewarm fish that's been body heated. Body temperature. Fresh tilapia. That's a good salad. I don't know if it's making me feel sexy, but it is a nice, good, healthy salad. Well, as we finish up the second course in our lunch, Daddy, how about this question that says, any pornos you regret doing or not doing from Lesbo? I don't know, did you ever do one that you didn't like? Oh yeah, I had a director once that didn't really respect, like we filled out this whole like, this is what I'm into and not into, and he totally didn't respect the fact that I said I wasn't into feet. I said I wasn't being into like superly humiliated in certain aspects. And then literally the entire scene was about foot worship and then humiliating me as a puppy, but in like a bad way and making fun of puppy play, which t super turned me off because it was not only things that I asked not to do, but then like over the top demeaning because he was just poking fun at mm -hmm. instead of having fun with. Uh, actually, now I do remember one of the first pornos I acted in uh, was a bondage film where the producer and director told me that to get the realness of being struggling and stuff, they were gonna leave me there for a long time. Tied up? Tied up. And I got really uncomfortable and wanted to be done, but because it was my first movie, I didn't feel like I had that say. I had to do what they told me. Mm -hmm. And it was really bad. They went into the other room and they were like drinking and stuff. And I was just like left alone for an hour or two. And I'm, I'm surprised I ever did another porn after that. But oh it, it was a while till I knew that's not the norm. <laughs> they shouldn't Absolutely do that. Absolutely not the norm. <laughs> so. Okay, the difference between porn and real life is fantasy and reality. Mm. And people that try to blur the lines like that make me super uncomfortable because that's not only way over the line, but really irresponsible. Yeah, I never worked for them again. Uh, but they did continue to make porn. And they're not doing well. Good. Cheers. Cheers to that. <laughs> it's what they deserve. Ooh, the next question asks, what is the one topic that you would still love to do on YouTube that you know you would never be able to? And we get this question a lot. You know, th there are some topics we can't cover that we get asked to cover, mm -hmm. like more edgier scenes, like blood sports and piercing and yeah. th anything that involves blood or needles, we can't cover on YouTube. We couldn't even cover cigars without that being marked as a sensational prank, which I thought was hilarious. That video did terribly. But we still try to push the envelope from time to time. Um, it was close, but no cigar. Personally, I would love to, do, to show actual scenes happening. Like not in a sexual gratification sort of way, but like really getting into impact play in such a way that you can see, you can be like, here is my pale ass body and how it reacts to bruising and, and hits versus somebody who has maybe a tan skin or a person of color that consents to being a part of that to show the difference between how different skins react to impact. I think there's so much ambiguity or like just things that people tend to assume in, in bondage and porn and kink specifically yeah. that you can't really talk, you can't even talk about it no. properly. You have to show it sometimes. But that's a good point because skin tone is a really good barometer of how somebody's bruising or how much they can take. And the darker the skin color, the harder it is to judge that by the eye. You have to tell it by temperature, by feeling it. Mm -hmm. And nobody would know that because nobody's teaching them that. And it's seen as pornography, even if you're trying to do it from like a clinical educational standpoint. Mm. Doesn't that just slap? We're just trying to make some impact here, YouTube. Don't hit us with that copyright <laughs> Oh my God, we're going through a bottle of champagne before we even get to the main goal. There's always time for a cocktail. <laughs> yeah, no, we're, we're still on, we're still on lunch. <laughs> we're still on lunch. And again, speaking of aphrodisiacs, while it does come from the Greek goddess Aphrodite, it also refers to uh, the word foam or Aphros and her origin story. Was she foamy? Her origin story happened when Zeus cut off Uranus's balls and threw them in the water and then foam. 
threw it in the water. And, and why it did foam. it foam? <laughs> well, fun fact, I, my first uh, porn company I shot for was- cut off balls, I'm gonna- No, 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 okay. no, no, no. <laughs> was Zeus. <laughs> oh, good, 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 yeah, good connection. And then there was another porn company right after that called Apollo. So Greek mythology was- Sexy. Prevalent in the sex community. And speaking of Aphrodite and getting your heart on, today's sponsor, Adamail, sent us a bunch of lovely little butt toys, some of which actually have heart shaped. Come on. That's what I like. So anyone who has a butt can be plugged. Come on. Oh, look, oh show them the love. heart. Show them the heart. <laughs> so they have this little plug set to help you build up. They've got the candy hearts editions. Some of them even say something on the bottom. Like this one says, spank me. It's a nice silicone. And it, it's insertable. It fits most most beginners very nicely. I kind of want to lick it. As well as the Flesh Jack skin grip. Please don't lick the butt toys. <laughs> Which is a jerk off sleeve that actually comes with its own drying rack here. So you can wash it and then let it air dry. It has like a little grip on it. Too. That's cool. That's a great design. Let me see that. No, no. Yeah, give it, 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 give it. Oh my God, why didn't they think of that before? They also have some lovely glass so you can put in your ass if you want to get a little bit more uh, fun play. And glass is actually because you can make it hotter or colder before putting it in. And they've even got some good Wicked Cleanse toy cleaner. So if you have some toys and you just need to clean them a little bit better, they've got everything that you need. <laughs> what are you doing? <laughs> I'm using strawberries like anal beads up my flesh jack. <laughs> So if you would like to get your own deal with proceeds from all their sales, do help to go towards fighting HIV and AIDS. Again, that is 50% off almost any item and free shipping on orders over $20 in the US with offer code what? Certain exclusions apply. Whether you're having a Valentine's Day with your partner, socially distancing, or yourself. <laughs> Thank you, Adam Mail. Please don't put food in your sex toys. <laughs> Okay, Daddy, give me your salad bowl. While I put away our salad bowls, though, I'm gonna get the next round of aphrodisiacs and give mm. you the next question. The next question actually is specifically for you and comes from Ash, who says, what's your favorite thing about pony play? Ooh, my favorite thing about pony play is I get to be in an animal headspace and be led around. It's kind of like an objectification because I am led around like an animal. Ooh. And ponies love oysters. What? <laughs> so we're moving on to our dinner portion and first starting out with an appetizer, one of daddy's favorite in fact. Ooh, oysters. And you know what the great thing about this is? No. You don't like them. <laughs> oh, I hate them. <laughs> For the sake of science. Yes. And YouTube content. I am willing to try some of the yes. slippery, gooey So I'm gonna take the shell. biggest one, because I love, these do put me in the mood. Because you don't get them very often, they're a lot of work to open, as I discovered as I tried to open these. <laughs> oh shucks. <laughs> I'll be nice, I'll give you a small one. See, this one's not that bad. Here you go. Yum, right? So the nice thing about oysters is it, it just has that texture, that slime. <laughs> Thank you for that, <laughs> right in my eye. And then you can blind your partner and they, they're totally are ready for sexy time. <laughs> Oyster, I barely know her and I also can't see her. Hello? Not to be sour. So oysters, beyond having tons of zinc in them, which is good for testosterone and sperm count, are also linked to apparently Casanova, who popularized them by saying that he was very promiscuous and was getting all these ladies because he was always having oysters, which gave him energy and helped with his sperm count uh, and his exploits with women. You ready? Yeah. Okay. I just. Mmm. Mmm. Oh my god, that's so good. Yeah, I just don't like the texture. Mmm. I ate it though. Mmm. Oh. The sliminess of it is the texture Ew. is so slimy. <laughs> and just slide down your throat. Think of it as ejaculate. <laughs> Casanova, uh, no thank you. I'm gonna let you keep, oh. Oh my God, these are so good though. I might be sick. That was like a texture overload. <laughs> <laughs> Not feeling sexy right now at all. Mm, I'm going in for another. Please, eat them all. I'm gonna just have some nice <laughs> avocado. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna try it with cocktail sauce. Ooh, maybe a big Newton. 
Big Noons are big on aphrodisiacs. Mm -hmm. While while you chow down, Daddy, let's get to the next question. The next question comes from Lesbo F nineteen, who asked, "What would you say to your younger selves in the beginning of your sex and kink careers?" What you're into is nothing to be ashamed of. Hmm. I, like I think lots of kinksters, they start off being ashamed because society has told them that they're not supposed to be into that kink. And so they try to normalize themselves into society and don't give themselves pleasure that they desire. You don't care about that? <laughs> Getting full. Whereas if I had started earlier, I would have had so much more pleasure throughout my life because I'm at that point now. I don't care and you'll get there too. Yeah, I will say there's a lot of, um, I'll say more mature people, for lack of a better term, that would reach out to us on our social channels that say they didn't have that kind of representation growing up that allowed them to be who they wanted to be. Like, people know what they're into. But they think they're a freak for liking it. So I definitely agree with you there, but at the same time, I would have told myself to start YouTube sooner because, <laughs> no, for, for real. <laughs> I wanted to start this channel about two years earlier than we did, uh -huh. but I didn't think that people would want to watch it. Why not? Because I probably had a very similar reservation around like creating content like that, and I just didn't think people would find it interesting or want to watch it. Mm, boy, were you wrong. Right? You're I don't know. With I the but I will also say, just educate yourself more. Go online. Don't trust everyone at the bar and what they say. Like, people have opinions and if I had listened to the people at the bar and what they said at first, I definitely wouldn't be in this scene because I was told that puppies weren't valid, puppies weren't a kink, puppies were just annoying and ruined the community. Oh, but puppies are so cute. I know. <laughs> Where'd that knife go? No. Oh. <laughs> I'm just, I, as far as aphrodisiacs go, I think that this is more of a status thing than anything. This is like a, ooh, we're going to a fancy restaurant and I'm gonna buy my, Sugar baby, whatever she wants. And for whatever reason, oysters are always very expensive. Okay, daddy, did you get all, oh, did you finish all those already? Mm -hmm. Oh my God. So why don't you go ahead and open up some red wine, which Ooh. is also known as a lovely aphrodisiac, while I get the main course that I slaved over for you. Absolutely. Here, so bottle over? I'm doing this lovely vintage of Tom of Finland red wine. While you get that bottle open, uh, we're gonna read the next question from Drew who asks, what is the one kink you wish that Amp had that he doesn't and vice versa? Oh, I guess I wish you were more into impact play. I saw that coming. Yeah, because <laughs> I would love to hit you. <laughs> I mean, consensually, of course. Uh -huh, uh -huh. <laughs> and I don't because you're not, but that's fine. But I, I really feel like that's something we could share and enjoy more. Okay, that's fair. And impact play for me, I'm just not a big pain person. But that doesn't mean that I can't appreciate that it takes a lot of skill, but also that it's a difficult kink to get into. It's, it's impactful in a lot of ways, not just the pun aside, but it's tough to be able to handle that kind of pain. Yeah, but I'll go slow. We'll, we'll, maybe we'll do an impact play episode someday. Okay, you heard it here. Ooh. But daddy, here we have the main course. Ooh. Some fresh salmon. That looks delicious, I love salmon. And asparagus. Is asparagus an aphrodisiac? Yes, actually. Even for water sports people? Well, some people like that weird taste apparently. <laughs> Cheers. Cheers. Mm, oh, bad. that is really good. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Yeah. So thank you, Tom of Finland. Mm. Mm. Waited for a special occasion to be with you. I'm sorry, why did you say you, but you look at the camera instead of me? Because it's not you. Oh, oh yes, you. <laughs> you. In fact, did you know that red wine obviously has antioxidants, mm -hmm. um, but alcohol never hurts your chances in bed. <laughs> oh. That's literally what one of the studies I read said. I may be easy tonight. You never know. On who? So wait a second, let's back up. You didn't answer the question, what is something you wish I was into? I wish you were into, I wish you were into giving me your chastity key every once in a while. I'd love to drive you crazy. <laughs> See, that's a trust issue. <laughs> Why is it an issue? So let's unpack that. <laughs> because when 
you have someone's chastity keys, I've seen it before, you get maniacal. No, maniacal. Yeah, you do. No, he no, gets no. a little... That. <laughs> right there. <laughs> Although you've held it for other doms for me before, and that's where you get drunk with power. I'm not drunk yet. I've only had half a glass of this lovely Tom of Finland wine. I don't know. I don't know what it would do to my dom rep. You're a switch. Again, this is another omega-3. This has tons of omega-3s, which is good for not only your libido, but it helps to amplify testosterone and progestosterone is a thing. What's progestosterone? It comes after testosterone, you're progressing past the testosterone. It's actually testosterone that you get through progressive. So call Flo. Flo. She's, she's gonna help you get that flow, that good flow. Oh my God, this is really good. Oh, okay, good, mm. well let me have some too. Mm. This is the ultimate aphrodisiac salmon. It wow. has garlic, which is known to be an aphrodisiac. Wait it has a second. saffron. No, 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 hold the phone. How is garlic an aphrodisiac? If I'm gonna turn someone on, I don't wanna have garlic bread. So garlic actually has allicinin in it. Allicinin in it? Allicinin. Allicinin, which increases cardiovascular wellness. So it helps with blood flow all over the place. I don't know if I want Alice in me. A little bit of citrus. And of course, salmon and asparagus are all aphrodisiacs as well, according to the internet. Mm. So this is food that is very rich and filling that doesn't get you too full. So this would be <laughs> like power, I'd be a power top after eating this. Down to- Oh no, not a power up. top. <laughs> mm. This is very good. I have to say, I'm liking aphrodisiac night. Mm. Chow down, puppy, chow down. Mm -hmm. Get nice and horny for me. Yeah, eat that aphrodisiac food, yeah. Next question. <laughs> this one comes from Mitch and says, what is the best and worst part to having a public relationship? Ooh. Good question, good question. That's interesting. Have you ever thought of what it would happen if we ever broke up? No, have you? No. <laughs> Why do you no, ask? Well, I mean, we've seen this in the porn world before, high profile porn stars who flout their relationship and how much they love each other and then they break up and then it's a big public disaster. Goals. They say relationship goals. All the time they're saying yeah. relationship goals. But the great thing about our relationship is we don't define it in a traditional boyfriend relationship. Mm -hmm. We know there's age factors, there are fetish factors, there are so many different factors. We just enjoy each other's company. Um, so we haven't defined it and th thus we have freed ourselves up to just enjoy each other freely. So that's the best part? That's the best part. Okay. What's the worst part? I guess never being able to yell at you in public. <laughs> Best part waking up. I don't know. I don't think there is a bad part for me. I'm really proud that you're my boyfriend and um, mm. I'm very proud of what you do and how you carry yourself and you allow me to be me, as crazy as that is. So... Very crazy. <laughs> I'm a little drunk. <laughs> so... <laughs> you had a bottle of champagne and wine. Come on. Cheers. <laughs> no, you're right. The worst part being that everyone has an opinion on your relationship when you're very public. Some people are like, don't you ever break up? Like, that's a lot of pressure. <laughs> it's a lot of pressure not it to is. break up. <laughs> well, it, not, that, not that we're trying to break up, but it's, it's a lot of pressure. But what we've always done has been very transparent about how we feel and what's going on. That's what I liked about you most is you communicate in a way I've never had a partner communicate before. What, you're... text? <laughs> <laughs> that's it, we're breaking up. Whenever you're upset, you always position it as, this is how your actions are making me feel. And yes. that disarms me quickly because I'm like, oh, well, I don't want him to feel like that. So of course, whereas if you had approached it a different way, way I'd get really defensive about it. Would you say we were very good at communicating? I'd say you are. <laughs> You're not bad though. You don't give yourself enough credit. Mm. Anyway, all that to say, I love our relationship. I think that we do a very good job. Very good. <laughs> We're not breaking up. <laughs> I feel this feels, it, it feels like that question was like... The oysters made us talk about this. <laughs> oh, I only have one oyster, girl. Mm -hmm. The salmon's good, though. Mm -hmm. A little dry, but yeah. otherwise good. Ooh, 
This is another question I saw a bunch. Pointers for Valentine's Day dinner or dates, go. We should have already had sex. <laughs> have sex first. Mm. Then gorge yourself yeah. with aphrodisiac yeah. food. <laughs> yeah. Start with some strawberries and champagne, have some sexy time, and then pig out on the salmon and guacamole. Who knows, maybe we did that, we just couldn't show you because YouTube. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. And we cut all the time. We did what? Oh, we cut the cam- got, got, We got, cut got, the camera. <laughs> He's like, what are you cutting? <laughs> what, what about the couples that are remote from each other? How can they celebrate? Get yourself a bottle of wine each. Mm. <laughs> I like this. I like this. Where this Get yourself going. a sex toy from Adamail each. Mm. Use offer code WAD at checkout. <laughs> A bottle of wine and add mail. That's all you need for Valentine's Day. Fill your mouth hole, then fill your butt hole. You know, that's what I always say. Put that on the shirt. I mean, if you want to spend a sweet day with your sweet tea and a sweet tea, <laughs> get them some not vanilla. Or any of our other new t-shirts on the safewordshop.com. Link down below. As we finish up the main course, I do have one more question that comes from Andy who says, is there any kinks that give you the heebie-jeebies? Kinks that give you the heebie-jeebies? I know for you what they are. Oh, I like this game. Go. Needles. Yeah. I don't know that you're I, I don't know if you have any heebie-jeebies around kink. Yeah. You're a big old pervert. Not having an interest in a kink does not make you automatically kink shamey about it. Like for instance, we don't want to wear diapers. We don't get into ABDL, but that doesn't mean we have heebie-jeebies towards it. I'm all but supportive of all the ABDL players. Okay, daddy, are you are you almost done with the main course? Mhm. Mm getting a little full? Mhm. Mm are you ever gonna ask me to do food related kinks on a video ever again? Every week. <laughs> we are almost to the dessert portion. Mm. The very last course of today's kinky meal. <laughs> We're gonna have another aphrodisiac, Ooh, which is pumpkin pie. Well, you know, this is the one thing I didn't have at Thanksgiving. Oh, really? Mm hmm. Well, did you need some whipped cream? Because we got plenty of that. Yeah! Hit me! No. Again, we do not recommend getting any whipped cream or sugary things in your private area, but whipped cream is absolutely a sexual object in some ways. I mean, I know for me, like watching Chris Evans with the whipped cream and mm, banana all over him. Right over his nipples. Uh huh. Uh, well, I was more interested in the backside, but. Uh -huh. We did have a question of us squirting whipped cream in our mouths and then kissing. That was an actual question. Oh, I was just about to do it. <laughs> oh, well, continue then. Don't let me. But give me some too. Mmm. Mmm. <laughs> <laughs> not as sexy as it sounds. <laughs> no, not at all. Love pumpkin pie. I actually don't love pumpkin pie all that much. I do. But I'm more than happy to indulge just a little bit. Just a little bit. Mmm. This is a monk bang. Oh my god. Would you call me your pumpkin? Yeah, I would pumpkin. Just like a flower. I love fingering my bananas. <laughs> Would you say that it was appealing? You can't be full yet though, because we still have chocolate. Mmm, chocolate. Which probably my least favorite part of the holidays during Valentine's Day is the assorted chocolates that don't tell you what's inside of the chocolate. So you know, you know the trick? If you poke your finger in the No, chocolate. no. I want the caramel. No. Usually it's the square ones. Yeah. That See? is square. Yeah. Mmm. Mmm, yeah. Caramel gets me going. Well, before we get going, there is one last question from Pup Bluish that mm. asks, the worst way to ask for a kinky session. I need. <laughs> That's fair. When people come at me with, I need you to spank me. I need you to, don't start with what you need. Start with how it'd be beneficial for both of you. Because <laughs> I'm not a sex toy like you'd get from Adam Mail. I am. <laughs> A human. <laughs> what if you needed a sex toy from Adam? It's actually really pretty. That's cute, right? It's really pretty. Chocolate all over it, but it's really pretty. Mm, that makes it tastier. <laughs> Ooh, well, I don't know mm. about you, Daddy, but I'm getting especially full. I'm very full. And I'm not just talking about the Adam Ale toy that I might have in. <laughs> but I do want to end on one last question, and this one comes from Porn Skyler, who says, if you were reincarnated as a sex toy, which one would it be? <laughs> I'd be a single tail whip. Because I like to make an impact. I would be a chastity device because I would cause excruciating pain to some people that were being aroused, but also were containing other people's excitement. So a cock tease. Whatever you want to call it. <laughs>
So, with our five course meal said and done, um, I don't know about you, Daddy, but I'm officially full. Mm, me too. And would you say that you felt hornier? I feel like having a nap. <laughs> Truthfully. Fair. Yeah, some foods are like higher caliber, they're a little bit more sexy because you get them at like a nice fancy restaurant. I think that a lot of this relies on placebo in a way. None of these things are factually based and backed by science to say that they are the love potion number nine. To be clear, I, it has to be over nine inches or I'm not interested. It is all hearsay, it is all her say, it is all them say. But at the end of the day, a well-placed aphrodisiac in the form of an appetizer will never replace good, honest communication, chemistry, and possibly good bottle of wine, <laughs> if I'm being honest. So is that the takeaway? Just get a bottle of wine, you'll be good. <laughs> you know what, the takeaway is have sex first, then have a really nice meal, then cuddle and have a nice nap. Mm -hmm. Whether you're having some phallic play with your bananas, getting some omega-3s on, or just having a little bit of dessert, always have a safe word. And today's safe word is... Mukbang. Because I don't know about you, Daddy, but I'm full. And I finally got to do it. Cheers. <laughs> and cheers to you. We hope that you guys all have a lovely Valentine's Day. And coming up next week, we are doing a 12-hour live stream over on our Twitch channel for my birthday. It's the puppy's birthday. Come join us. So get your food daddy on, get your feederism play going, and if you find an aphrodisiac we happen to miss, leave that down in the comments below. Feed me. Feed me. I, j I just did. <laughs> There's so much food still. Eat. <laughs> Ring that bell if you like ringing bells. And leave a like if you want to see more food play or mukbanging episodes where we answer your questions. Yeah, if you want us to eat every episode, I'm all for it. Just tell us. And we will see you guys in the next episode. Bye! Bye. I don't have any heebie-jeebies around kink. I don't. Yeah. Oh, there is one. Oh, the piercing, when I've seen this a couple times, it reminds me of a horror movie. Speaking of hangings and horror movies, we just started playing Dead by Daylight on our oh, Twitch channel. Oh, it's awful. The puppy is like a serial killer. In the game. <laughs> yes, oh. because that's the point of the game. It's so gross. In real life, I'm delightful. I don't know what you're talking about.